Well, you can see what's going on today. We're gonna get on this monster. No pun intended. Monster 1200R. Mmm. Been going through my instantation a little bit and playing with it, getting it set up the way I want it for a little setup. We got our ride modes, battery, backlight, clock, pan code, RPM, unit settings, information mode, your lap, and we don't have DDA access right now. But information, core, full, track. I'm in track uh, screen right now. You know what? I'll go back to full just to show you the differences between them. Boom! All of our information at the bottom is still is now available in a reduced tachometer but personally I don't need to know all that all I need to know is my speed and right now I'm in touring mode mmm oh side stand guys I'm getting excited <laughs> So that's what I like, you know, I like myself, something that has a nice visceral sound. Right out of the box. Something that has an upright riding position with handlebars to make my urban commute more comfortable, but still be able to handle all the duties at the track. Thank God for traction control. You can feel the front end floating and just a wheel kind of bubble, 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 just riding right across the asphalt surface, but not getting out of, out of hand. And we got this nice steering stabilizer. I was playing with it earlier. I actually probably need to crank it back up a little bit. I turned it all the way down just to do a little road comparison. So that's still the one thing with the Ducati. I'm trying to find a way to love. It's got torque. It's just a shaky presentation until you get it up there in that 4,000 RPM range. It's nice to be on a black Ducati. We still got some red accenting going on here. Same controls that we're seeing across the board. We got our Brembo, radial master cylinder. Same with our hydraulic clutch. Our model sporting a little fly screen, a beautiful display. And I can always go back that these controls are just perfect size. I love the horn location. On this guy, hey man, where's all my fancy quick shifting and all that jazz? I don't have it. Unfortunately, you won't have it probably until 2018 on this machine. They're starting to add it to the 1200S's in 2017 now, where you have the option of adding the quick shifter to it. So yeah, now we're in a good happy zone for us. It's a little bit lower on this machine than I'm used to on a lot of the Ducatis, which is nice. This is where it's getting to having its more effective snappy power. Hold on, baby. Hold on. Pirelli rubber, single-sided swing arm, oiling suspension, Brembo brakes. The bars are wide and flat. Nice. I don't. I don't mind that a bit. The thing we need to do is get this beast out onto the track. We know it's going to be a monster for the street. Should have waved. Be nice to my officers of the law in this region. Checking that cell phone. Nice. If I get quiet, I'm just listening to this amazing motor. Gah! Nice. She launches hard. Once you find that loving spot with your friction zone on the hydraulic clutch, Accuracy and throttle and clutch coordination. Yeah, nice launching motorcycle. I was surprised at what we did with the Diavolo at the drag strip. A 
Yeah, you know, that's just one of the things that these Ducatis do. It's got this really nice transition. It feels like it has extremely low center gravity. The X Diablo was the one that really surprised me the most because I'm thinking long wheelbase with a big fat 240 tire. This thing is going to handle like a turd. But it was felt even more nimble. See so yeah, start. Second gear start. Shake it, shake it, shake it. Up in there. It's one of the things I don't like about the Ducati when they're brand new. It takes them a couple thousand miles to get their transmissions broken. They don't like to find neutral. They gotta be warm to find neutral. Soaks up harder downshifts with those big pistons that want to go. Engine brake! Let's open up our mic. Just gotta find out how much you're liking the twisties over in Sardinia. It's almost overwhelming because the power was there, just one pick up that front wheel out of the corners. And you know what we haven't done? We haven't switched over to sport mode. So let's do that with a simple left button. It tells you what to do if you don't know what's going on. So right now I'm riding, close the throttle and the clutch. Oh, it timed out. Get it back into sport, hold sport, it tells you what to do. Boom, now we're in sport mode. The default settings are gonna lower my trash control and my ABS down to two and trash control three, which was at four. Changing some throttle response, it's going to its high engine power with factory default settings. playing the mountains with you guys a little bit on this thing. This urban riding is kind of practical. It's what we do. We know the bikes are going to be overkill for anything we do on the street. Except for the G310 I've been on all week. My god, that, that needs a little bit more juice, but it's one of the most agile motorcycles. And that's one of the things when I was riding in Sardinia this year, it was that the 797 and wringing the neck, hanging off, pulling that thing, fighting it around, but I'm having a ball doing it because I know the bike's really not going to get away from it. But then we transition directly onto the 1200S's and oh my god, it's just, you, oh jeez, wasn't ready for that, you know. It's only negative. I'm a double tap on this turn signal cancellation, which you cannot do. Yeah, and I made that word up. I know you guys hit me on that. I make up all kinds of my own words, but you know what I mean. You mean what I know. So if I tap that accidentally again, boom, I'm in my ride mode. I lose all of my instrumentation except for my speedometer. So I have to wait for that to time back out or hold it and select it again taking forever man oh there we go so just remember one single tap on turn signal cancel this thing's definitely got some sex appeal though a little stop light see what's cracking with everybody out there in the world today if you're moving did you see that fluid transition right into neutral you stop and try to find neutral when it's really new like this might have some issues. Mm -hmm. All kinds of people to stare at this beautiful machine today. Mm. So the 1200S transitioned into an extremely similar motorcycle to the R this year. They gained horsepower, they changed the exhaust, the subframe went to the R designed to get rid of the bulkier hill guards that it boasted in 2016 and prior. Monster 821 still have that hill guard, which 
she's a little bit of a hindrance. It actually cost us our first two sales on a Monster 1200 desk because it did not like that heel guard for more athletic riding, getting on the track with it and whatnot. You could feel like you could transition around on it. I'm wearing my khakis and feeling a little bit of the heat starting to roll up into the saddle. Not feeling a lot on the chest and core. Obviously, it's not resonating up there, but I got leather to protect me for that. This is a good test, man. We're going to sit here and see how much heat we accumulate in our crotch, butt, thighs. Try not to look too silly talking to ourselves in front of everybody. My leg is resting on that. So as a shorter rider, I'm finding my leg resting on that plastic heat shield. It's not burning me up or anything. Not as hot as I thought it would be. And we got a lot of people coming this way. I wonder what's going on here. That's all right. Because they're going the other way. So even at three, we're starting to get it. If I hit the gas here, see at a 25, even instrumentation, you feel like da -da 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 before it kicks in. So. Take it out and do stupid things with it. But I'm trying to rock and roll home, man, so I'll catch you guys later.